Here in the System Science Lab at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, we're very interested in the problem of integrated circuit design from the systems designer's point of view. Uh, we're particularly interested in making the whole process of integrated circuit design uh, from conception through layout and testing an interactive exercise involving the designer and a personal computer. Icarus, which is the program which I'm going to demonstrate today, is our first attack on just one piece of the overall problem of integrated circuit design. It is an interactive circuit layout system. Icarus runs on a small computer called the Alto, which is a 16-bit microprogram processor, a 2.5 megabyte cartridge disk drive, a high-resolution CRT display, a standard keyboard, and a cursor control device, which we call the mouse. The Icarus display consists of two windows, the upper window here and the lower window uh, down here. These windows give us a flexible working view of the circuit, and we can actually look at two different pieces of the circuit uh, at any one time. To the left of the upper window is what we call the command menu. We have in here a, a list of the more common commands, uh, any of which can be selected by pointing at them with the, with the cursor and clicking one of the mouse buttons. Uh, between the two windows are uh, two, two different types of menus. One is the parameter menu, uh, shown here, where we can select different parameters and change their values by typing numbers on the keyboard. And then there's the stipple menu, which uh, allows us to select different mask layers uh, to, to do our drawings on. Each stipple pattern represents a different mask layer and allows us to differentiate uh, between the layers even when they overlay each other. We, found, we have found this uh, stippling technique uh, much easier to, to use than the more common outlining technique because it makes the layers easier to differentiate. Let me now select one of the, of the patterns and actually do some drawing uh, in this lower window just to give you an idea of how items are constructed. We can draw, uh, we, we draw items by identifying the center points of lines and uh, it fills in a default width which uh, is one of the parameters in this uh, parameter menu uh, between, the, between the windows. If we select a different pattern, it may have a different default value which gives us a different line width. Uh, you'll notice that as I draw an item, it becomes outlined. We call the outlined items the selected items, and there are various operations which we can do on selected items, one of which is to simply move those items around uh, using the mouse, or to, in fact, copy those items if, if that's the operation that's necessary. You notice that both of those operations, which are very common, are quite easy to do in Icarus. Uh, if we may have made a mistake and we wish to delete an item, we can merely confirm the default selection in the command menu, which is the delete command. Uh, once an item is deleted, that command changes to undelete, so that in fact, with one more uh, keyboard uh, click, we can get that item back. Let me now delete all of these items and just show you quickly how we would go about constructing a simple circuit. I'm just going to draw a simple inverter as it, w as it would appear in, in NMOS, which is the uh, technology that, we're, uh, that we most commonly use this system for. <clears throat> just drawing in the diffusion. Now I'm going to add the, uh, the gates of the transistor and after I've added this gate, I realize that I want to make it, make it wider. So in fact, instead of making the line, changing the width of the line, I'm merely going to stretch one of the edges uh, to, make the, uh, to get the same effect. I'm now going to just insert a couple of contacts.
and uh, in both of these areas as well. And the last step of, of putting in the depletion uh, implant, and we have a, a, uh, an NMOS inverter. To give you an example of one of the other commands, I'm going to select all of these items and ask them to be mirrored about one of the axes. In this case, I'll ask it to be mirrored around the x-axis and have a copy of that appear. And let me just move the window so that you can see the whole thing. <clears throat> so that gives you an idea of how we go about actually constructing uh, circuits from scratch. <clears throat> For, at, from this point, we commonly want to define these, these items in a what we call a symbol or what other people have called a cell something that we can make an array of or, or save away in what we call a symbol library. <clears throat> Before I actually go and define the symbol, let me just point out that in the upper window, we have the, the same circuit uh, appearing as, was, as I was drawing it in the lower window. And uh, it's just appearing at a smaller magnification. In addition, we have a, a bounding rectangle here which describes for us the area in the upper window which actually appears in the lower window. Now let me go ahead and, and define these items as a single symbol. And you'll notice that as I do this, that I get feedback in the uh, command feedback area here so that I can get an idea of, of what command the system is expecting next. In this case, it's asking me to mark an origin and then a rectangle around the, the area to be defined as a symbol. And then it asks for a name, and I will type in a simple name, and the name can be arbitrarily long. And I can confirm what it actually thinks should be in the symbol, and it will then store that away uh, in the symbol library. What's left are just the items which were outside of that symbol, which I can now delete uh, because they are all left selected, and I can just delete them in a single keystroke. Now let me draw that symbol in, a, in an array, as we would do to actually construct a, a larger circuit element. Again, it asked me for the name of the symbol, and then an origin for where to start the array. And then asked me for uh, how many items should appear in the x direction and how many in the y direction for this array. So I'm just going to put in 10 and 10 as an example. And <clears throat> that array then is immediately drawn on the screen. As, as you can see in this upper window now, uh, or in, in neither of the window can we, windows can we actually see the whole, the whole array. And so to, to fix that up, let me just change the magnification in the upper window to make things appear smaller so that we can actually see it. You'll also notice, of course, that the, what we have drawn is not just, is, is only the outlines. Uh, this is commonly the way we work. We don't normally want to see the insides of, of the symbols which we already uh, have defined and, and saved away. But in those cases where it is important to see uh, what's actually inside, we can actually, we can ask them to be made visible quite easily. To give you an idea of how we actually use these, these two windows in a more uh, useful format, uh, what we normally do is to have the whole circuit or a large piece of the circuit actually displayed in the upper window. And because of this outlining box, we always know where we are uh, in the circuit when we're looking at the detail in the lower window. And to move around on the circuit, it's easy to point at something in the upper window and have that, that area appear in the lower window, but at, of course, a much higher magnification. Once you have completed your drawing, or once you have completed a cell design that you want to check further, you can select a, the, the print command in the system and uh, generate check plots directly from the Alto. Uh, one of the types of printers that we use for making those check plots is a Versatech matrix printer, printer which allows us to generate check plots which look essentially the same as they do on the screen. We use the same stipple patterns and can generate the same levels of magnification that we can on the screen. Here we have just a couple of examples of, 
of different uh, scales of check plots. Here is one at a very gross scale that you can do a very fine level of checking on. And underneath, I just have another one, which actually is a check plot of a whole circuit, which allows you to more effectively check the overall interconnections and how the symbols and so forth fit together. OK, so what we've shown here today is a interactive system for doing integrated circuit layout that allows the designer to participate in, in that phase of the, of the design in an effective manner. Uh, as we look to the future, we will be looking at other ways to use personal computers in making the other, other steps of the integrated circuit design process more interactive.